Hi, it's Nat from Sonic Arts, and I want to give you a quick tutorial to show you how I record, comp, and edit uh, vocals in Ableton Live. I get a lot of people asking me how I do it in Ableton Live. A lot of producers uh, ask me because there's no real easy sort of setup, a native way of doing it, as in Pro Tools, where you have the playlisting feature and you can easily record new playlists on a track and then comp them up onto the main track. Ableton Live is designed more for producing. It's not sort of natively designed to track live audio, but there are some really easy little templates and tweaks that you can set up to record live vocals. Often, I have a vocalist coming in and they've just provided me with a track, like a beat that they've purchased and they want to rap over it or they want to sing over it. And so I've just dragged this track in up the top and I'm going to show you how I'll set up a recording session for, for tracking vocals. So I'm going to get rid of this MIDI track and then I want to create a bunch of audio tracks. So I'm going to actually show you an example of this in a full session as well. So let's just say we want to do three takes. You can do as many takes as you want but the first thing is I've got these five audio tracks um, and I'm going to hold shift after I've selected the top one and click on the bottom one so they're all selected I'm going to hit command G to group them up. Now we've got five audio tracks in a group and this group is going to be called vocal takes tails takes and now this top one is going to be the comp the next one is going to be take one take two take three take Four. So I've set this up for four four vocal takes. Um, so you can see there I'm coming through input one on this microphone, um, and I'm not. If you want the vocalist to be able to hear themselves, you pop that on auto, and they'll hear themselves when they're recording. Uh, if you want to force it so they can hear themselves all, all the, time, the time, there we go. See, I'm getting a input monitoring. I forced it to input monitor there. Um, you hit that in. I prefer to have on auto so you only hear yourself when when you're actually recording. I'm just going to switch this off what for me so I don't get a feedback loop uh, through my screen recording software. Um, so when you're tracking it's sometimes vocalists like to have a little bit of tracking effects so like a little bit of reverb so I'm just dialing up um, send uh, the return track one which is a reverb that's the same as this knob here if I switch screens a um, little bit of delay little bit of little bit of reverb and maybe even a little bit of incoming I mean I don't usually track with compression but sometimes you can just do a really light little compressor just for inexperienced vocalists just so it sounds nice in their headphones as they're tracking it um, and then all I'll do is I'm actually just turn all of these tracks off except for the one that I want to record on so here's take one and then let's say I record just record me talking over this here so this is, this would be the the person singing here, la la la, and if you want to give them more in their headphones, if you're just direct monitoring, you just use the volume of this track here. Um, and then, so let's say for argument's sake, I'm just going to duplicate that and make this a full length waveform. Um, let's just say they sang all the way through the song, there they are, that's their take. Um, just consolidating that with Command J, Control J if you're on a PC, um, and then and then what I'll do is I'll turn that track off, and then I'll simply record again through the on take two. And if they want less of themselves or more of themselves in their cams, and when you're just you're just monitoring um, through the main output or your headphone monitoring your audio interface, I just kind of control it through there. Um, just this is a really simple quick way of just dumping vocals recording them straight into Ableton Live um, and then if you push it up I mean I don't think it'll ever be if you have to push it up that far for them to hear themselves you, you've got some gain structure problems so you need to turn your incoming gain up on your microphone or I mean if, just looking at that that's a pretty good level of, of recording there that's a good reference if you're just looking straight at a waveform so then turn that off and then They'll go, uh, I really liked, uh, you know, do three takes. Like, I really liked take number three, but I stuffed up the chorus. So this is another thing that I do. I just pop little locators. I've just right-clicked in this little area here. See where it turns into a little speaker? Just right-click, add locator. And I'll go, here's the chorus. I'll do this probably before they get in. Verse two. 
um, you know, chorus two, bridge, um, bridge, bridge, there we go. Um, so like, I really like take number three, but I stuffed up the bridge. So um, you can just go down here and you can just say, okay, let's just record the bridge. So you can hit record and then they'll just be recording over the bridge there. And another thing you can do, if, you, if it's just this section here, you can just highlight it. So you just highlight that. If you want the recording to just perfectly start there or just a bit before it, you hit Command L to loop that section. Then you take the loop off and pop the punch in and then the recording will start bang on the start of this little line here, this right here. So the recording will start there if that punch in is on because you can hit record here and you'll see it's not recording. It's not recording until it hits that little line then it will punch in. Now we're live. So you can even use that like if this was a perfect take but just this little phrase here was like they'd stuff that up you can actually just go I want to punch in and then punch out so they sing along sing along and then you can hit record and it won't destructively record over there just like this just direct monitoring you just use the volume of this track here so you just heard me talking there but see it's gonna punch in record my new take and then it hits there it's gonna punch out again so there's that's a little nice little way of doing a, a punch in and punch out now then what I'll do is simply go okay so the first verse on this take sounded great I'm gonna hit command E to split that and I just drag it up and then I, they, they really liked this bit here I'm gonna pop that there and you, these might actually because I copied and pasted these they're all the same color but um, when you're actually tracking these they'll be different they'll they'll match the color um, of the track so they're it's kind of important um, the colors it helps when you're comping so it might look more oh, if I can get that color right there it is so that's what it will kind of look like if you've recorded it'll it'll be the same color as the track and then then you know which take you've um, you've got that comp from and then they're like well that little word there I kind of like I stuffed that up so we'll go look in these other and there was a perfect one there command E I'll pop that there and then for this take that was perfect all the way through there and then, then I just wanted this new little bit in the bridge that we cut down there. So, I mean, when I'm comping like a, a professional vocal for a release, I'll be like a lot more, um, I'll go a lot more granular and you'll see when I show you this other session. But so there's our comped vocal right there and I can fold these up because I don't really need them. And I'll grab that comp and I'll actually pull it out of the group. And now I'll call that lead vocal so there's my vocal comp and then I can just switch off these vocal takes and then I can treat that lead vocal any way I want reverb delay I can begin to put um, you know I can edit it you know EQ you know to whatever I'm not going to go into that now but then you can go in you can you can do the fine-tune editing by right clicking on it going show fades right there and then you can sort of cut out breath noises or when the person's not singing you can and there's like they cough or something like that you just delete that do little fades now if this was like an acoustic song you might not want to like be cut, cutting up the waveform like that because there might be you might be able to hear the room noise or the ambience and the silence becomes actually really loud you can really tell it so instead of like hard cutting it like that I'll just go back you can actually go over here and go to the mixer and just do some volume editing here so you can just this is the automation line here you can just sort of dip down their breath noises um, and then I'll usually go through and you know get it perfect so that's how I track vocals and then um, I can just keep these if I decide later I can just unpack that if I really just need to find another phrase if we decide something's not usable. So I'm just going to quickly save this. Um, and I'll show you I'll show you how this plays out in an actual um, session um, that I've done here. Okay, we're looking at a session here. Um, 
of a track for a female um, singer and producer that I was um, mixing and mastering and I recorded her vocals in the studio. So here's the tracking vocals down here. Um, and you'll see it's exactly the same setup as I showed you before and I've just kept going with the takes there. So we ended up getting up to, you know, um, probably nine or 10 takes. And you can see that what I've done is I've gone through. So here's the comp track here. I've just gone in, so let's have a quick listen. Um, let's have a listen to this comp track here. Don't you try to bring me down with those down vibes. I know that you're feeling low inside, so just go outside, be in the sunshine. So you can see there that I've gotten quite granular with my editing, and if I show the fades, I've really like spent time because this is an electronic music track the way they played it so there's like a lot of sections where there's fair amounts of synth going on um. and by the things you life while you got it run while you can don't be disheartened so you can see I've like cut out the breath noises because there's a lot going on on this track I don't um, I can just sort of do hard cuts and just clean it right up. And then what I've done is I've actually um, popped, I've made a copy of that track. Um, I think actually I um, put Melodyne on it. Yeah, here we go. So I've, I've actually exported that whole track um, and then brought it back in. And that's what it looks like there. Um, so rather than pulling that comp out, I've just sort of consolidated it and copied it up so now I've just got um, and I've done the same for the backing vocals these are the backing vocals down here and there's the tracking little see how it just packs up nicely so these are the tracking for the backing vocals here and we'll have a listen to what they sound like but I can just fold them up because that was just the tracking and this is the actual comp right here so now we've just got the lead vocal where I've pot all my um, my final chain and I've actually melodyned that so I've just tuned it a little bit she's quite a good singer so I didn't need to do much and then let's have a quick listen to the final uh, vocal here every single day waking up at 12 that never gets made it'll, it'll drive you insane you don't have to do it all just pick one thing to focus on and do it well you should live your life while you got it Run while you can. Don't be disheartened by the things you can't plan, babe. Okay, so that's how I do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a really simple, really quick, easy way. I've done this on uh, probably at least 10 different uh, EPs, tracks. I've just tracked the vocals straight in to Ableton Live and I've gotten some really good results. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you visit sonicarts.com.au for more tutorials. And if you thought this uh, tutorial was valuable, subscribe and then you'll get updates about my uh, future tutorials. I've got uh, quite a few uh, video courses in the making at the moment. So stay tuned, everybody. Thank you.